Hi everybody, and welcome to another edition of Ultrasound Tips and Tricks. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a supraclavicular subclavian central line. Uh, I wanted to show you guys how to do this because I learned it two years ago and have had almost complete version of my uh, access to this particular line because uh, I like it so much. Uh, and so I wanted to go through a couple things before we start showing you how to do it. First of all, you know, like why would you want to do a new different technique for a central line when you've been doing IJs? And femorals and subclavians all your life. Uh, well, it is nice to have another option uh, in the rare circumstance when you, you can't use a certain side or if the vessels just don't look good. Um, uh, secondly, uh, it's uh, it's actually a fairly easy technique to do uh, because you, where you're trying to target is actually the confluence of the IJ and the subclavians. So you're actually hitting a very large target. Uh, and lastly, I think you know uh, because it is a large vessel that you're hitting and you're using an in-plane approach with your needle, I think it's actually a fairly safe uh, way of using ultrasound to guide uh, needle placement. The pros of this technique are definitely, uh, for me, uh, functionality. Uh, you know, when you're standing there at the head of the bed putting an IJ in uh, and, you know, you're getting hit in the head with the monitor and uh, the endotracheal tube is in the way, uh, it's really, it's really uh, you know, not user-friendly to be standing at the head of the bed. Uh, ultrasound machine might be down off to the side of the bed and you're trying to squint at it. Um, this technique, you stand at the side of the bed like you're putting a subclavian in, which is, I think, more functional and a much more easier to do. Um, also, you tie the line onto the shoulder uh, like a subclavian and not up onto the earlobe like an IJ, uh, which is nice for the patient. And then finally, um, the subclavian is usually stented open uh, regardless of volume status. And so at the base of the neck, it tends to be open uh, uh, easy to see even if you got somebody with a really flat IJ. The cons of this technique are obviously that it's new uh, and that you, know, you may not have experience doing it, no one's looking over your shoulder, uh, but if you can use uh, the in-plane technique like we do with the fasciolica blocks to guide your needle, I think it's going to be uh, a really easy and safe technique for you. But that's the other issue is that you have to be comfortable using the ultrasound in the in-plane technique. So the traditional IJ technique is to insert the central line uh, at the base of the transducer towards the ipsilateral nipple in this direction. The technique which I'm going to show you is maintaining the same uh, position of the probe, except you're going to be coming in with your needle in this plane at the base of the subclavian where it inserts into the IJ and goes down to the heart. So your, your needle trajectory will be here. So this is a graphic representation of what I'm talking about as far as the needle entry at the junction of the internal jugular and the subclavian veins. Now notice how the needle entry is pointed at the contralateral nipple. This is showing the right side, although I actually prefer using this on the left. So this is the common IJ view that we use in the short axis to, to, uh, to insert the catheter. Uh, as you move the transducer down the neck, we'll hit the subclavian, and the needle entry point will be here, straight into the subclavian vein, as opposed to coming in through the IJ, which would come in straight this way. So this is just another graphic showing the same needle entry point and how if you line the needle up with the subclavian, uh, you end up essentially uh, becoming perfectly in line with the subclavian as it comes down to the mediastinum and into the heart. So this is what the position looks like in real time. As you start to map this, uh, you, you start here in a typical IJ type approach, and then as you move the transverse down and it rests on the top of the clavicle, you just kind of rock it uh, back and forth until you get the subclavian to come into view. And then once you've got that mapped out, um, that's when you can kind of move, you know, move over, uh, clean off the area, and, and, and kind of start in with your approach. So I just want to show this again as uh, the, the view looks like a typical IJ approach with the vein on the top, the carotid below. And then as you move it down uh, and you hit the subclavian, you see the, the subclavian become apparent there uh, with the valves noticed 
uh, as the blood moves back and forth so you know that you're venous. This is the perfect entry point for the needle. So that's it, guys. Uh, that's the approach for the supraclavicular subclavian line. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. As you can see, uh, if the anatomy is right, uh, it's a very straight shot into the subclavian. I really like doing it. Uh, a couple suggestions are if you're going to start doing this uh, before you get the, the patient prepped, uh, take a look first, um, you know, uh, non-sterily with the ultrasound, kind of, you know, make sure that the, the anatomy is there and that you're confident in, in what you're going to be putting a line into um, and, uh, and then go for it. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, you may call, email or text me. I'm happy to meet up with you and show you in person how this feels and looks uh, like on myself or on, on some random person in the department. Uh, and as long as I'm sporting this mustache, I'm sure they'll say, fine, whatever. Uh, but uh, do feel free to reach out to me for any questions uh, or concerns, as always. And uh, we'll see you next time.